What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Today we're going to be having a look at that newborn great white shark story that was doing the rounds a couple of weeks ago. Lots of you have referred to it in the comments here on Shark Bites, so I thought it would be pretty good to chat about it. If you've got a keen interest in sharks, I imagine it would have been pretty hard not to hear of this news story. It was literally everywhere. But for those of you that did manage to miss it, I will break it down briefly for you. I imagine quite a few of you will have heard of the Malibu artist before. He's a YouTuber and professional photographer slash videographer based out of California in the States. Carlos, which is his real name, is known for filming some pretty epic drone shots of white sharks doing their thing off the south coast of California. He regularly documents white sharks swimming close to surfers and films some pretty interesting behaviors that he sees. When you get out there with a drone and get that much footage, you do actually start to notice some really cool cool things happening. Anyway, back in 2023, Carlos was out with PhD student Phil Stearns when they filmed a pretty unusual looking white shark. The shark itself was small, around five feet in length. Its fins were squished and almost looked a little deformed, and it had an odd color to it, kind of appearing albino white. But the even stranger thing was that it looked as if it was shedding, or more technically speaking, sloughing this white substance off its skin as it was moving through the water. Carlos and Phil kept this discovery pretty quiet for a while because, as we know now, they intended to publish a research paper about it. This is a pretty normal thing to be fair. Do you remember when I couldn't talk to you guys about that nurse shark paper I was writing? It's standard procedure in the scientific realm to not talk about something that you're writing about. And as well as this, the scientific review process can be painfully long. For Carlos and Phil, it ended up being around seven months, but they did eventually end up publishing the research in the journal Environmental Biology of Fishes. It's a relatively short research paper, almost like an observations or a communications paper that doesn't go into too much detail on some key points. But again, it is a novel findings paper, so they are usually quite short. We can see here though, it's got an altmetric score of 2,136. Altmetrics are used to determine a paper's influence on the wider world, i.e. how many people are talking about it or news articles that are being written about it, etc. Now that right there is a very, very high altmetric score, which means we can see that it definitely got a decent amount of coverage. For reference, my most cited research paper, which was the one about shark entanglement in marine debris, which at the time I thought got some pretty good news coverage, has an altmetric score of 631. So having one over 2000 means that a lot of people were talking about it. And this is what some of you guys would have seen at home. There were hundreds and hundreds of news news articles written about this research paper. The media just full blown went for it and it eventually ended up going viral. But sometimes the issue with this is the media can often end up misinterpreting the information that's put out there. If a news article is written about a research paper and it gets something slightly wrong, this can end up snowballing when other news articles refer to the first news article which got the thing wrong and they get more and more things wrong and it just gets out of control. And then it ends up with a different message that's getting sent out to the world that people just believe as fact. Sometimes it's down to the media outlets themselves that get it wrong and sometimes it's down to the press release that was written about the research paper but sometimes it can be because of an ambiguous paper itself. After this research paper was published there was a little bit of pushback in the shark science community about it. You likely won't have seen this pushback because it's not going to make headline news like the original research paper did. But pushback from the scientific community can often be a good thing because it keeps us challenging our own ideas and it makes sure that we're thinking critically about the things that we're seeing and reading and not just believing them as fact. This is a skill that I've told you guys about before and it's a really, really important skill to have in your locker. Before I comment on the research paper and their findings, let me make one thing clear. I think this is a really cool finding. Tiny white sharks are rare and getting one on film is even rarer. So I've got massive respect that they managed to document this. My intention here is not to dig out Carlos and Phil because I think they would welcome people challenging their findings. But in my opinion, the research paper stretched it a little bit and then the media coverage afterwards stretched it even even further. There's no denying that this is a small white shark, probably a very small one, and you can see it's small from the footage. But scientifically, you can't tell whether this is a newborn white shark from drone footage. In the research paper itself, there isn't any description as to how they calculated the size of the shark. It's written as an estimated size of around one and a half meters, which is just shy of five feet in length, but I'm not quite sure where that's come from. We know that estimating the size of sharks without any point of reference in the water is really hard. And even when you do have points of reference, it's still hard. Without a scientific measure taken, we can't be sure of its size. Now, I'm not saying that this isn't a small white shark because it is small, but 
I don't think you can say, yep, it's a small white shark that's this size and that definitely means it's a newborn. Admittedly, it's not the only evidence they present in the research paper. They also discuss fin morphology, which would definitely at least suggest that it was a juvenile. And they also discuss this strange white substance that's coming off its body. In the paper, this white substance coming off the shark is hypothesized as two different things. The first is an intrauterine substance, which is a milky fluid produced by adult females in the womb. And then the second is that it's a rare skin condition that hasn't been documented before. Again, these are both only hypotheses and they will remain hypotheses because you can't precisely determine what that is from drone footage. You can kind of see where I'm going with this here. The overall suggestion that I got anyway from the research paper is that this area where they filmed that really small white shark could be a birthing ground for adult female great white sharks. And this is a massive claim. Shark scientists have been trying to find out where great white sharks go to give birth for years with no real successes because it's a really hard thing to prove, right? You've got to see continuously lots of tiny white sharks in that area over the span of several years to prove that it's a birthing ground. And that, as it stands, has just never really happened. One small white shark filmed by a drone doesn't confirm it. It all boils down to extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And what we're being presented with here is not extraordinary evidence. It's amazing, but we haven't proved anything just yet. Carlos and Phil do speculate quite a bit throughout the research paper and actually only have one sentence that says additional evidence may be required. That additional evidence that they talk about is going to be vital in moving this forwards. If they'd got years worth of footage of tiny, tiny white sharks consistently using this area, then I'd probably be saying something different. So the research paper is a little ambiguous, but but when you've got ambiguity, the media can take that and run in any direction they want with it. And unfortunately, that's what happened. You had a bunch of news outlets reporting things like world's first newborn white shark or saying things like hours old white shark, despite there actually being no definitive evidence of that. Or they were saying things such as it was unlike anything that had ever been seen before. I think the world's first stuff was being repeated a lot. Almost every news headline that was written about this story mentions world's first. But it's not the world's first newborn white shark to be caught on film. In this footage taken back in 2011, we can see a great white shark pup that had been incidentally caught in trammel nets and was soon after released in the Aegean Sea of the Mediterranean. The findings were published a few years later by a scientist known as Hakan Kabasakal, who's written extensively about juvenile white sharks in the waters of Greece and Turkey. This particular individual that was caught was measured to be 85 centimeters total length, nearly half the estimated size of the milky white shark. The scientists here proposed in this case that this white shark was perhaps around a week old and there was no suggestion that this pup was mere hours old. So it turns out that it's this one here that might have been the world's first newborn white shark caught on film. Interestingly here, despite this sighting clearly being a white shark pup, the area actually wasn't proposed to be a white shark birthing ground until years later in 2020 when more and more evidence of tiny white sharks had popped up in that area. So you can see greater amounts of media coverage doesn't necessarily mean it's a world first. Admittedly, Carlos and Phil never actually claimed that this was the world's first newborn white shark. It was the media that decided to run with that. Whether that was misinterpretation of the research paper or the ambiguity that's in there, I'm not sure. Carlos and Phil have likely though filmed one of the smallest ever white shark seen alive though, which in itself is a really cool achievement. I should say here about this story though, I've not spoken to a single shark scientist yet who hasn't expressed some skepticism about this finding. It's not just me sat here on my own moaning about it. There's a big chunk of scientists out there questioning this and they should be questioning it because that's what science is all about. We have to question and criticize the things we see because that's how we drive the science industry forwards. Constantly questioning, constantly challenging because if we don't, science just stands still. And again, I don't want this to seem like I'm digging out Carlos the Malibu artist or Phil Stearns because I'm not doing that. I'm just expressing my opinion on the paper and also probably criticizing the media for running with it in the way that they did. Carlos and Phil did do a video not that long ago where they talked about the findings from the paper and tried to reiterate that the things they were saying were just hypotheses, which I think is a great thing to do. But by that point, the media had already run with the story and probably said a few things that weren't exactly true. Carlos, Phil, if you guys happen to be watching this video, I've got mad 
respect for what you guys are doing and for documenting your findings. I think it was an awesome thing to see. And importantly here, I hope you guys get the additional evidence that you need to support some of the hypotheses that you've made. For everyone else out there, treat this video as another lesson in thinking critically about the media and some of the things that you read about online. It's easy to just take everything as fact because you read it on the BBC or National Geographic, but every media outlet no matter who they are, should always be questioned. I'll make sure I stick some links in the description below so you can check out the Malibu artist's video on this and read the research paper that they wrote as well. My question for you guys at home though is, what do you think about this? Do you guys think this is most definitely a newborn white shark that's mere hours old? Or do you guys think that some stronger evidence is required first? I wanna hear everything you guys have to say in the comments below, so make sure you post it and importantly, I want you to let me know how cute you think that little white shark is because I think it's adorable. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bite channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button. But before you head off, if you enjoyed that video of the teeny tiny white shark that was found in the Aegean Sea, then you're probably gonna enjoy this video right here. In it, I discuss where you're most likely to find great white sharks in the Mediterranean. It's been somewhat of a mystery, but in this video right here, you will find out exactly where they are. So make sure you check it out.